Yes, this is so cool. We have a five class yogic series starting January 25th, so that's this week, going through February 22nd, Thursdays, right here at 5.30 p.m. It is called Winter Healing Sanctuary, Trauma Honoring Yoga Approach, a specific methodology including pendulation, titration, and self-soothing through balancing of the vagal tone. I don't even know what that is. So which is a good reason to show up and find out for yourselves. So thank you so much for being here and I would like to turn it over to the Reverend Christina. Thank you, Jenny. Good morning, Althea. Good morning to everyone online. Those of you online enjoy being comfy and cozy. We thought the boiler would be up and we thought it would be in the 50s this weekend and again, the weather crystal ball was incorrect. So today is about courage into chaos, and thank you all for being here because you're courageous for being here as we're cold. So this service will be a little abbreviated to honor because I want everyone to be safe and comfortable. Um, Althea represents all people and also acknowledges the Cheyenne, Arapaho, and Ute Nation that this beautiful building stand upon. And we believe in oneness, awakening to the oneness in the spirit of all. And we're a center of diversity. We welcome all faiths, all traditions, all sexual orientations, and very aware of to, to the, the atrocities that continue to happen on the planet. Now and in the past, we do celebrate oneness of all to be an open as a safe spiritual space for speakers and seekers to further their journey on the spiritual path toward awakening the spirit of oneness of all. Now, any of your first timers, we are not always this cold. <laughs> I promise you the boiler, Bertha, will be back and running. And if you're new here, you get a free lunch, so join us. The kitchen is warmer than in here. So if you want to, raise your hand, and someone will bring you a flower, and we will acknowledge you. So anyone new here, any first timers? Okay, they're all at home. So anyone at home? Send us an email or put it on Facebook, or when you watch this on YouTube, put a like in it, and we welcome you. And now for Rick Kitzman, our prayer practitioner, who is <laughs> one nook of the north, will be praying some heat in. Thank you, Rick. I'm a Colorado native. <laughs> but this goes beyond being a native. <laughs> All right, welcome, welcome. Let's do an opening prayer. So let us take a deep breath. And as we exhale, just feel your shoulders sinking and relaxing. And in this joy and the laughter of the moment, let us remind ourselves of our own divinity and the divinity of each other. Let us recognize that oneness that flows within each and every one of us in this building, for therein lies the internal warmth of being alive. And when we stop and get quiet and recognize the divinity in each other, this is when we realize the truth with a capital T, and we all know this. We just have to remind ourselves and get quiet and remove ourselves from the noise of the outside world. And so I declare this, this recognition, this realization is so filled with the joy of oneness and that each of us here is to realize that potential, to recognize that potential and to go out and live it in this world. And I declare that each of us will hear what we need to hear today, see what we need to see, speak what we need to speak, for there is divinity right here. And so I give great thanks with such appreciation for <clears throat> our Reverend Christina, for our volunteers, for our staff members, 
<clears throat> for our board, for each and every one of you here that shows true love and dedication. And so I declare right here and right now that these words that I speak are in the mind of spirit, in the mind of God. And there is that divine love that imbues each and every single realization. And so we simply let go. We know that it is done. And together we say, and so it is. Hi. So now is the time in the service when we stand and say the same in a beating, being, and after that, the, we'll sing the face of God. And the words for this are up on the screen. So stand if you can. Wrap yourself up. <laughs> God is all, invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect, perfect love and perfect substance. We are individualized expressions of God and are ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. Now we'll sing Face of God. <clears throat> You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of love I hold you in my heart You are my family you are the face of God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Judith. Our artist today, who is not on stage, we have a surprise for you, is Michael Stanwood. He's been here many times. He does the didgeridoo and so many other things. He asks that I do not do the big formal introduction, that he's a presence of light and love, has won various awards throughout the state of Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Stanwood. Sit back and enjoy.
Good morning. This reading is from Brene Brown. Courage is a heart word. The root of the word courage is core, the Latin word for heart. In one of its earliest forms, the word courage meant to speak one's mind by telling all of one's heart. Over time, this definition has changed, and today we typically associate courage with heroic and brave deeds. But in my opinion, this definition fails to recognize the inner strength and level of commitment required for us to actually speak honestly and openly about who we are and about our experiences, good and bad. Speaking from our heart is what I think of as ordinary courage. Brene Brown. Let me just do another reading for you. <laughs> From Martin Luther King. Courage is an inner resolution to go forward despite obstacles. Cowardice is submissive surrender to circumstances. Courage breeds creativity. Cowardice represents fear and is mastered by it. Cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when we must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular, but one must take it because it is right. Martin Luther King. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into, into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Courage into chaos. I began the year where open the door 2024, loving you more. From resolution to commitment, and the three steps of commitment to keeping your commitments. Last week, clarity. This week, courage in the midst of chaos. Next week, consciousness, mindfulness. There is chaos in the world. As Yeshua ben Joseph said, Jesus the Christ, I am not of this world. I am in it. We are not of chaos. We are of courage, fortitude. We've been here before. The seas rise, land rise, land falls. Last night, 6.7 earthquake South America. I follow Mother Earth. Mother Earth is speaking and is feeling our energy. Even though there are wars overseas, there are also wars in our own heart. Is our body at chaos? Are we affecting the world? Think about it. Are we? This was written over a thousand years ago. Obviously, we've been here before, and we're still here. The courage is to step into what the physical world shows as chaos may actually be a rebirth. The old has to fall away. It is. Even when you watch the news, some days I think it's a play of comedy. Even a tragedy of errors. 
but we get to choose to be in a place of courage. And it takes courage to where we are today. We went through COVID. We're, we're courageous, even though some days we may not feel that way. How come I know we're connected to that divine energy, that divine harmony? We are that courage. We are that power in the midst of chaos. The chaos is actually outside of you, if you really think about it. If you really think about it, if you take a break and say do something creative this week to allow a creative energy to flow through us, or even to say, today I'm not going to go into the spiral of chaos, no matter what shows up in 2024. That's one of the things I mean about opening up the door in 2024. You're stepping into something more positive, and we get ourselves out of the way of judgment and saying this country's wrong this political person's wrong stay neutral this year stay neutral don't go into judgment we don't know the total history of this planet and even all the wars that are going on because we get stuck in who's right who's wrong shoulda woulda coulda we really don't know I believe this year, truths will be revealed. I think it's going to be a say what year. We're already seeing it. We don't know. So how about we step into a vision of being courageous when we don't know? Because that takes courage, real courage. Winston Churchill, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. I like that last part. Sit down, peace be known, listen. Stop making everyone wrong. Sit down, peace be still. That's what that means. Most religious traditions talk and speak about meditation and prayer. They may not use the word meditation, but they use contemplation. I wanted Michael here because that didgeridoo means something to me of where it comes from. It's an energy. It, it brings something that's so, I say, native to our souls. Earthy sound. It makes me sit and listen. Sit and listen where you are. Right where you are. Listen to Mother Earth. When people want to get you stuck into like, oh my God, this, this political person said this, or this person did this, and this did that, step out of that and courageously, lovingly, and it may be a friend or family member said, um, I'll call you up later. Or I don't want to participate in this spiral. Because you're spiraling down in a lower frequency. It's not a high frequency. Let me share with you a story of courage that I didn't know I had. 2007. I'm going through a divorce, very tumultuous divorce. I'm writing a book about it, right now about it. And I was terrified to leave this man, because this man told me, if you leave me, divorce is not an option. I knew what that meant. Told me where he would, they would never find my body, be somewhere in Lusk, Wyoming, very specific. And I was scared. I'm talking in your bones, terrified. So, based on a lawyer and a dear friend that said, you need to serve him. Get ready for it. When he comes out of surgery, in a hospital, he had surgery. Because that's the only way you're going to get away from him. 
So I'm driving to the hospital with papers in my hand. I had already told the doctor, by the way, this doctor said, oh, I'm not surprised. We see it all the time. Women of abusive relationships wait till the mate has a surgery and serve them when they're coming out of surgery to be safe. I didn't know that was a thing. The nurse is like, oh, no, we got it. He was screaming and yelling at us going into surgery before the drugs kicked in. I was like, oh, boy. So some of that nervousness was going away, but I knew. They called me and said, you have the papers. The doctors and the nurses at Swedish Medical said, we got you. If he goes off, we have happy juice to calm him down. And I'm in the elevator by myself. And I'm like, Spirit, how am I going to do this? My hands are shaking. Because in my head, I'm in chaos. I've been in chaos for over four or five years. And I started just asking for help. And I affirmed, I said, okay, if I'm still here and he didn't kill me yet, well, there's a life for me. And I even called in Archangel Michael Spirit guys, my ancestors surround me. And there was a glip in the elevator. Y'all, I don't care for elevators that much. It went like this. And the lights blink. But I didn't get scared. It was like, oh. And I walked out. And I swear I had wings. And the nurse said, we got your back. And he was still, it wasn't a life-threatening surgery, very common surgery. And he saw, he's like, well, you're looking pretty peppy, ready to fight me after getting out of surgery. I'm talking four hours later. I'm like, oh, here we go. I wanted to pick a fight while he's in the bed. And I took a deep breath, and I didn't participate in the screaming and the yelling. My hands stopped, and he's like, you don't look yourself. And I said, I haven't been myself for four years. Here you go. Mike dropped. He started screaming and yelling. Guards came in. And everyone's like, you're okay? I said, I'm fine. He's the one in chaos. I'm not anymore. Talk to you later. That's what it takes. I have never done anything like that in my life before. Courage in the midst of chaos. That, that glip in the elevator. I realized what that glip was. That was the angels let me know, we're here. That's what we need to have. Even things we don't feel we want to do, but we know we have to do. Where in our lives we feel we have chaos? In your health, in your finances, in friends or families or old relationships. Sometimes we got to just take a stand. And that stand will involve prayer, like it or not. Because sometimes the prayer is like, oh, sweet Jesus, help me, or dear God, help me. Sometimes it's going in for a job interview or thinking about moving or ending a relationship, starting a new beginning. It feels chaotic because everything's swirling, but your gut is telling you this is the right path. Last week when I spoke, on clarity, that clarity, when the clarity shows up, then you're like, ooh, I got to make a choice. I got to make a choice. I got to make a decision here. And that's where the courage comes in because sometimes it's not popular. After that whole divorce fiasco, people left my life. Because by me walking away, five of my girlfriends who were also in abusive relationships, I showed a mirror. They were furious. Well, you should have just put up with it. You should have, you should have, you should have. And I realized, I'm like, oh, I'm the mirror. Two ministers who, who were so supportive and towed the line with me told me that you're the reflection. Your book is the reflection because they're afraid to leave the chaos because a lot of times chaos get comfortable. Look how comfortable our planet is with chaos. 
It doesn't want to change, but Mother Earth is going to change it. I believe miracles are going to be happening on this planet. I feel it. I know it. As an intuitive, I know it. So as everything goes up and down and shifts and reality shifts and people are talking about new money and crypto and all this, who knows? Stay courageous and know whatever the chaos is, this too shall pass. This new thought movement, these teachings talk about that, holding the consciousness. Next week, a dear friend of mine, and hopefully the heat will be on, Holly Duckworth, amazing practitioner, dear friend of mine, she has a mindfulness company. She's going to be talking about that because that's that consciousness we are required to heal and to hold. Because I hear people say, why can't these wars stop? Why can't, why can't, why can't, why can't? Are we at war ourselves? Are we at war with our neighbor? That's chaos. It's time for the drama to stop within our own lives, to clear out all of that. And some days it takes us saying, hey, no more. No more of that. This is a chart by David Hawkins. You could find it online. Courage is a fourth dimension. It starts at the bottom. Many scholars believe we're going into a fourth and fifth dimension. That's how come everything is collapsing. So something new can arise. I believe we're going into a new golden age. The old just has to be exposed and fall away. You can Google that. I did not invent that. But courage is on a higher vibrational scale. And it's not fighting. Courage is not war. When I walked in that hospital room, usually I was always ready for a fight. I felt empowered. I wasn't scared. I, even though I was technically by myself. Friends that said they were going to come with me couldn't because they couldn't face themselves. But I wasn't. I had angels with me. I had spirit guides. And some of those angels with the nurses and the doctors said, eh, we're going to just knock them out to calm them down. And if you start screaming and threatening, we're just going to call the police. That way, if anything happens to you, we know. These people were strangers, but they weren't strangers in the oneness. That goes to show us when we ask for help, it shows up. And my divorce was done. He tried to drag it out. Eight weeks. We had property. There was a lot of money involved. Eight weeks. And this was during the recession. 2008, house sold in two days. Almost double the price. That, when I stepped into courage, which I know we all can do, and ask for help, the doors open, open wide open. And that is this year. Step into your courage and shift what you want to shift. Make, forget the word resolution, commitment. Get clear and have the courage to do it, even if someone laughs at you or say you're nuts, blah, blah, blah. If it brings you joy and peace, do it. Be it. Be divinely courageous. And Michael, would you mind coming up and playing a little music for us as we come on up? What can you do this week? To be, yes. Thank you, Michael. To be courageous. Do something fun. Maybe do something you've always wanted to do. Maybe it's even play hooky from work and go to a museum or go watch a movie and say, hey, I got sick time. I think I want to do something totally different. Remember when we were younger and teenagers, we would do things, climb trees, eat dirt. I ate dirt. Anything that's a little different. Because as adults, we got stuck. We're supported. In that loving, courageous wisdom. As Michael starts, I invite you all to take a deep breath. Maybe even ask, Spirit, 
What's calling to me to be courageous about? What have I withhold from the world and withheld for myself to not step into the courageous wisdom as we hear the bell? And peace be still. Be still and know that courageousness is higher consciousness. That the divine intelligence, known by no name and all name, that ether, that God, that eternal energy and light is all there is. As we move forward into this month and this year, I know for everyone, even those online, that there's a courageous, higher consciousness blessing unfolding for all, for our friends, our family, and for ourselves. And that we courageously hold the presence of peace, love, light, and divine wholeness for all sentient beings. I'm grateful for this time, this space, and everyone for saying yes to this lifetime, for being born is courageous. And there's a clarity of wisdom. And I know for spirit is all there is for all of us. And I release this into the divine law where it cannot return void. And so it is. joy uh, for me and uh, so uh, we're going to play with a little fun here with the didgeridoo. I know it doesn't sound like a fun instrument but it feels like it can be if you have enough courage. Thank you. 
I'm so sorry that the, uh, the, the didgeridoo is not cold friendly. <laughs> it kind of stops in the middle. <laughs> this one's. <laughs> Can I come back when it's heated up? <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Now this is the time where we give of our treasure, time of offering. I invite the ushers to come up, and we're going to do a prayer. Those of you online, Go online at theacenter.org and click the donate button. It does help our fundraising to help repair the broiler and other things that, because life does happen, things happen. And we also give back to this community as you give back. Before you ever give, touch your heart and think about how that money circulates. And blessing every day. Hey, bless your wallet. Bless your bank account. Be grateful for what you have, knowing that everything is circulated back. And you can also take your phone if anyone has their phone, and it will take you directly to our website. Together we say, the universe provides all that I need and all that I give. With great joy, I share my prosperity planting seeds for a world I'm helping to manifest. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. And we also have a dip jar in the back. I call it a little Vegas thing. $10 dips, and it will light up for you. And Yolanda Van Zant once said, money stands for my own natural energy yield. I love that acronym. It always comes back. It is a current. It is a current. Even when you go shopping, bless it. Instead of complaining how much the grocery bill is, saying, I know that I will be provided for. And always, because Spirit always does. And now, it's time for prayers of the people. We are an affirmative prayer center. Your prayer requests are heard. I ask that you keep it simply sacred. No last names, please. If you have a prayer request for someone else, make sure that you have their permission. Thank you, Gunder. And we also have a Nancy who will meet with you one-on-one -on -one in a warm spot at Althea. Nancy's up here. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> Yes, yeah, she can meet with you outside, absolutely, for an affirmative prayer. That's when you meet with an amazing practitioner such as Nancy. She will affirm for you what you may not know, but your spirit knows is true. When you work with a practitioner, things happen. It manifests and is done and complete. But right now, anyone has any prayer requests? Yeah, Kandara up here. Can I sit down? It's too cold to stand up. <laughs> Resolution in the Middle East on both sides. Yes. For the greatest good. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? I pray for my friend Christy who has cancer and receiving lots of treatment. Yes. Divine healing and light. And anyone online, feel free to contact us through our website, altheacenter.org, to submit your prayer requests, and knowing they are held throughout the week in high consciousness. Anybody else? Okay, then. Well, all prayed up and warmed up, and plus you guys want to get out of here. You could just tell me the truth. I, I totally understand. <laughs> okay, Jenny. Our beautiful Mary Jo Honey Otis, she lost her 94-year-old mother. I know. And it was beautiful, though, what she said about it, how they all came together, how the years leading up to it, right, even, and her great big family who were all here. But Mary Jo is a huge part, a beautiful part of this community, and it hurts to lose your mom even when she's 94. I know. It does. Thank you, Mary Jo. I'm so happy you're here. 
Oh, Bruce. Yes, and celebrate you, Bruce. Bruce. I'm, I'm the new person here, and I have never seen, and I've been in a lot of church communities, I have never seen a group of people come together so fast, so lovingly, in a true family. And Bruce, thank you. You're not just celebrating Jason. Jason and I have been talking a lot. Um, but Bruce, you showing up as well. And I'm... <laughs> but thank you that this is truly a community and if anyone wants to be a part of it we do accept members Kristen's one of our new volunteers a dear friend of mine for many many years that's what spiritual community is about it's about calling checking in tapping in hugging each other keeping each other warm and loving one another because guess what chaos brings people together it truly does. So see the grand birth of what's going on in planet. Bruce, really, truly, your expertise of who to call, what to do, Bruce, you're amazing. So thank you. Thank you all. And Ricky and Daryl, time to sing us out. And where did Daryl go? I know I just saw him. There's Daryl. <laughs> he sneaked up on. Good, mor good morning. Please stand as you're able and join me in our community song, Morning Has Broken. Morning has broken like the first morning blackbird has spoken like the first bird praise for the singing praise for the morning praise for them springing fresh from the world Pray, sweet, the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet passed. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day.
And now Bob is going to send us off. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Ricky. Are we, are you on? A warm hand or a cold hand or a gloved hand? I know my hands are cold. <laughs> Grab it and feel the warmth and get ready to <laughs> shout it out. Something splue pendiferous is happening to me <laughs> right now. Something splue blue pendiferous. pendiferous. <laughs> I don't it is that thing called life. It is that thing called life. I walk in courage. I walk in courage. I stand in courage. I stand in courage. I speak in courage. I speak in courage. And I listen in courage. I listen in courage. I feel it. I feel it. I know it. I know it. And I am it. I am and it. And so it is. So it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tom.